Water always has been essential for human life, yet somehow water tends to be missing or misunderstood in depictions of ancient sites and landscapes, whether in scientific site reports or in creative fictional output. At every ancient site, regardless of the location or the time period, people could not have lived there without first satisfying the basic needs of their food and water supply. The food and water resources can be closely related, but this video concentrates on water at ancient sites. I would argue that a depiction of an ancient site should be consistent with the natural distributions of water. In my view, people should be able to recognize or at least to imagine how a place was inhabitable in the past, including the practicalities of water. In many cases, the landscape has changed through time, and therefore the water resources have changed in their placement and their accessibility. When viewing a landscape today, the rivers, lakes, and other water features may not be visible in the same ways as they were in the distant past. Usually, though, clues can be detected about how the landscape has changed through time in terms of the geological landforms, sedimentary layers, and associated contexts, including a change through time in the water resources and hydrology of the landscape. With a basic understanding about water resources, the depictions of ancient sites and landscapes can become more logical and believable. They can encourage new ways of thinking about how people actually lived in these places during the past. Otherwise, without knowing about the water supply, the setting can be misunderstood or misrepresented. Given the critical role of water, many societies have developed traditions for protecting their water sources. These traditions mostly are practical for ensuring survival, and they could involve special modes of operation when needed during times of scarcity with extreme weather events or environmental disasters, as well as during times of stress with warfare or siege. At castles and other fortification sites, very often a freshwater source was protected in a safe area, typically beneath the ground. A mountaintop or massive rock formation can offer defensive positioning, and this kind of geological landform could contain caves or caverns that access downward into the natural water table or aquifer. In other cases, people may have excavated wells downward into the freshwater sources. Additional protective traditions about water may be related to religious beliefs and practices. They may be linked with annual or seasonal calendars. Furthermore, the calendars may be linked with ritual events and ceremonies. In ancient Egypt, the role of water, especially in the Nile River, was connected with nearly all of the major activities, traditions, and cycles of life. The social, religious, or even political aspects of water can be accentuated and sometimes strictly formalized. These outcomes are most obvious in the regions where rainfall and water flow are strongly differentiated in wet versus dry seasons of the year. Mobile groups may have moved from one place to another depending on where they can find or access sufficient water at different times. Groups with more of a sedentary lifestyle may have developed traditions of water storage and possibly redistribution, and these traditions tend to be formalized through religion or ideology. I would like to emphasize that the ability to manage water resources depends to a large extent on the numbers of people involved. A single person or a small group of people could survive for several days, weeks, or even years by collecting and storing rainwater, accessing the water table or coastal seepage flows, and practicing the many options of sustaining a water supply during wilderness survival. These options have been and continue to be effective for hunter-gatherers, for nomadic pastoralists, and for other groups who tend to live in small numbers. The wilderness survival options with water become unrealistic with larger groups of people, especially when these people maintain a sedentary lifestyle, fixed in a place. You might consider the density of the numbers of people per unit of land area or per unit of accessible water volume. These calculations never can be precise, and they always incorporate a degree of approximation toward conceptualizing how people could have lived successfully in a place. Most of us understand that we need to intake a certain amount of water, preferably every day, just in order to survive. The human body cannot store water, and therefore all of us need to replenish the water inside our bodies on a regular basis. 
I will not offer health advice in this video, but I will note that all people need to maintain access to a sufficient amount of fresh water essentially every day. In addition to the basic necessity of drinking fresh or purified water, people use water for various purposes. For these non-drinking uses of water, the source does not always need to be fully purified, but it should be free of obvious pollutants, bacteria, and diseases. People often use water for cooking and for cleaning. Large bodies of water can be used for transportation and trade routes. Moving water potentially can generate energy in a mechanism. Water is necessary not only for people, but also for the plants and the non-human animal inhabitants of a region. Whether living as hunter-gatherers or as farmers, people naturally need to live in a place with enough water to support the population size and to support the habitat for whatever plants and animals may be parts of the food supply. I encourage to think about the roles of water within an ancient site or landscape, and then the other aspects of ancient life become significantly easier to comprehend and to visualize. This approach can be productive in both scientific site reporting and artistic fictional representations. The results can clarify the practicalities of how people lived in a place. The output can build more convincing and authentic interpretations about what happened in the past. What are your thoughts about water at ancient sites? How would you apply this information or perspective? Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.